what makes video game soundtracks, anime soundtracks, you know, movie soundtracks and whatnot, whatever makes them beautiful is the melody and the arrangement. There's really so much work put into the music. And it's surprising that people don't incorporate it into their own music as much. I go by Rice UK, the Raisin Man. What I'm known for is incorporating video games, anime, um, other pop culture references and samples, taking their theme songs, their soundtrack music, all that, and I take them and I remix them and basically reconfigure them and incorporate them into hip hop and R&B beats. Combining it with the hip hop drums just gives it a flavor that I don't think you see anywhere really, you don't see it much. And it's a very unique experience I think, mixing it together. It makes, it's just dope sounds. It's really uh, catchy, really familiar, very nostalgic. Um, you recognize certain themes immediately because you probably grew up on it. But just to hear it with hip hop and you know the contemporary music with it layered, it's just amazing, it's just a crazy experience. You feel nostalgic, then you can vibe. It's just, I don't know how to explain it really. It's, it's amazing, it's an amazing feeling. First time I got immersed into the nerddom is when I was four years old, four or five years old. My dad got me a Super Nintendo for my birthday. They had the Super Mario pack with it, with all the games plus Super Mario World. And I got that and I played it so much that my mom put, <laughs> she put a limit and I could only play on weekends because I was like going crazy with playing it. I also remember watching Akira way back in the day. So I would say those two things really got me hooked on into video games and anime culture. I'm Congolese. So I grew up listening to Congolese music from my parents and family. But then I had friends who listened to, you know, old school hip hop like Wu Tang, Biggie, um, Nas, EPMD, a bunch of other guys. So I started listening to that, even though I shouldn't have been listening to that at a young age. But I was listening to that from, you know, friends influence. And when I started making beats was actually recent, around 2010. So about eight years ago, my friend Major Capers, I'm shouting him out. Major Capers, also known as Mr. Capers, taught me how to make beats, taught me how to make like the basics of how to, you know, sample, how to lay drums down. And then from there, I just got obsessed with it. I love making beats, so it's not even a chore to just make beats and post on my YouTube. So initially, I was just posting my beats, whatever I made, just post it on YouTube, whatever I made, just post it on there. Then people started catching notice, and then I entered, I entered this uh, beat production competition held by my friend at Aces Galvin, and gained a network of other producers who were also doing the same thing I was doing, and I was learning from them. Kept posting, people started catching on and started sharing it around to forums and online on Twitter, Facebook. So that's when my channel started growing. Soon it was like a couple hundred and then it got to a couple thousand real quick. And I was like, this is crazy. So I just kept posting and it eventually grew. YouTubers started hitting me up to use my beats for their blogs or for their videos. And I was just, it was really cool, like really organic. Just got hit up by a bunch of people online and we just collabed and networked. There's one Donkey Kong sampled beat called The Fear. It's one of my first ones I've sampled Donkey Kong. That one still to me is one of my personal favorites. I don't know exactly why, but for some reason every time I hear it, it just gives me a good nostalgic feeling. But about the game, about you know, that time and space where I made the beat. I was really like really curious about beat making. It was really funny. Really like uncharted territory. So Making that, and that was the first time I realized, I was like, I could do this, you know, I could make beats and they sound good. So that was one of my personal favorites. A lot of people like, you know, the Super Mario beat where I flipped the game over scene.
that one I also like as well because it's really chill and mellow and it seems timeless even though you know you can't be saying that because it's a bold statement but I feel like that beat and specifically is timeless you can play it at any time I feel like 10 20 30 years from now you can still play it and feel good That one I made four years ago, I think, or well, four or five. I just did it for fun. I posted it on YouTube and SoundCloud, and it was getting regular numbers. And then all of a sudden, people on Vine, when Vine was still around, started using it and making skits with, with the Harry Potter beat. And people thought it was really <laughs> interesting to make a hip hop version of Harry Potter. And there were really funny skits on there. So it started catching up because people want to know what is the music what's the music and then it found out it was made by me and they went on my channel and clicked it a bunch of times and then a guy named young mavu he's a rapper based in belgium shout out to him he actually hit me up a long time ago he wanted to rap on the beat i said that's cool he made an instagram post on it it went viral and then he made a video on it and made a song called Black Magic. Cause I got that black magic. What? Got that black magic. Hey, got that black magic. What? I got that black magic. And it literally went viral as in the whole world was playing it. That really got my plays up on um, that beat. That's why that beat's probably the most played beat out of my whole collection. certain video games specifically that I want to delve in more again is uh, Chrono Trigger. I want to get back into that again. More of the Final Fantasy, Legend of Zelda, Mega Man for sure. I haven't done that many Mega Man beats, but those have been pretty cool. And you know, the new video games that come out, a lot of new indie games have amazing music. So I check those out. I play them once in a while. And if I like the music to those, I usually, you know, go ahead and flip them. And you know, it's fan art pretty much. So.